Join me as I dive into the heated debate over Mark Miller's fight to slash Canada's immigration numbers and see if I can find a solution that works for everyone. Welcome back to CI News. Today, we're diving deep into a critical and controversial issue affecting Canada's immigration policy. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, along with Immigration Minister Mark Miller, recently announced new immigration targets for 2025 to 2027, revealing that Canada will reduce both temporary and permanent resident intake starting in 2025. This decision is a significant shift from Canada's previous immigration approach, especially given the post-pandemic surge that aimed to address labor shortages and stimulate economic growth. But now, the government is slowing down immigration, a move that sparked quite a debate. Today, we'll cover the rationale behind these new immigration cuts, the reactions from various stakeholders, and the potential implications of these changes. Mark Miller's Justification for Immigration Cuts First, let's look at why Immigration Minister Mark Miller and the Trudeau administration made this decision. Miller emphasized that Canada's rapid population growth has put significant strain on housing and social services. He's received positive feedback from Canadians who see the cuts as a reasonable step to manage these challenges. According to Miller, an open borders policy simply isn't sustainable. Miller explained that the new targets are not about winning votes but are a step toward what he calls responsible governance. The aim is to create a balanced immigration system that meets Canada's economic needs while also addressing concerns about overburdened resources. So, in short, Miller's rationale is that controlled immigration will ease pressure on housing and public services, leading to better outcomes for Canadians and new immigrants alike. Backlash from advocacy groups and business leaders. While some Canadians might support the policy, it hasn't come without backlash. Several advocacy groups and business leaders are worried about the impact this will have on vulnerable communities and the economy. Hussain, from the Migrant Rights Network, suggests this decision was driven by politics rather than practical needs. He's concerned that up to a million people could be excluded from Canada under these new targets, arguing that the government may be using immigration policy as a way to boost poll numbers. Hussain sees this as a shift away from helping the labor market and focusing on housing. On the other hand, business leaders have expressed concerns that cutting immigration could lead to labor shortages across many sectors. They fear that fewer temporary foreign workers might disrupt efforts to revive the economy. In response to these concerns, Miller has said that the government is listening and will continue discussions with stakeholders. But he believes that, for the immigration system to function properly, the flow must remain manageable. He's committed to preventing system overload and avoiding issues within the temporary residence system. Balancing public opinion and policy. Miller highlighted that this immigration strategy also reflects the opinions of everyday Canadians. Throughout the year, many voiced concerns over rapid population growth's impact on housing. But Miller stressed the need for continued dialogue, especially with those who might disagree with the government's approach. He's also careful to clarify that these changes are not an attempt to fuel anti-immigration sentiment. He acknowledges that conversations about immigration are complex and that dismissing concerns as racist won't resolve issues. Instead, Miller sees these adjustments as part of a plan to create a sustainable immigration system, one that upholds Canada's values and meets its needs. Economic Implications and the Challenge of Workforce Needs Economists and business groups are worried about what these cuts mean for Canada's economy. Economist Rebecca Young of Scotiabank recently commented that the government might be overcorrecting. She said last year's immigration surge was too hot, but this year's reductions risk being too cold. Young's concerns aren't unfounded. Immigration has historically been a major contributor to Canada's economic growth, especially through economic immigration programs. Miller acknowledged that Canada's immigration policy has to balance multiple factors, economic growth, humanitarian efforts, and maintaining the vibrancy of Canada's francophone communities. For example, he's pointed out that an aging population could lead to a reduced worker-to-retiree ratio, which would put a strain on social services. Back in 1973, the ratio was 7 to 1, today, it's closer to 3 to 1. Without a younger workforce, Canada could struggle to sustain its social programs. So, while the government's decision addresses immediate pressures on housing and social services, there's a delicate balance to maintain if Canada wants to avoid economic stagnation. This situation is especially challenging because immigration helps meet workforce demands across key industries. What's next for Canada's immigration policy? As we look ahead, one thing is certain, Canada's immigration policy will remain a focal point of discussion. 
Opposition parties and advocacy groups are likely to keep pressure on the Trudeau government, questioning how these changes will impact the economy and labor shortages. The big questions that remain include How will these cuts affect Canada's economic growth and industries facing labor shortages? Will the government introduce additional support for immigrants affected by these cuts? And, perhaps most importantly, how will Canadians respond to the potential long-term impacts of reduced immigration? Some fear that these cuts could lead to anti-immigration sentiment, similar to what we've seen in the United States and the United Kingdom. There are also concerns about the possibility of immigrants being scapegoated for issues like housing shortages. In the end, the Trudeau administration's decision to cut immigration marks a pivotal moment for Canada. Minister Miller has made it clear that this policy is about protecting Canada's resources, not pandering to anti-immigration sentiments. But as this debate continues, the challenge will be to ensure Canada remains both economically competitive and socially welcoming. Thanks for watching today's deep dive. If you found this analysis helpful, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe for more insights on important policies, and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Do you think the new immigration targets will help or hurt Canada's future? Until next time, this is CI News, keeping you informed and engaged with the latest in policy and current events. Remember to check out our next video, and don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments below.